You're listening to Gil Scott Heron. You're looking for information. You need to know the news. Remember the now? Turn your dial to 1450 and tune in Kathy Hughes. Remember. For the best in D.C. radio talk, the Kathy Hughes Show. 6 to 10 a.m. weekdays on WOL AM. The pyramids. in the nation's capital. Welcome back to the Kathy Hughes Morning Show. This morning we've been playing excerpts from the New World Percussions Ensemble's new album, New World Music. First time heard on any radio station here in W. Who, who says that? I think I'm old better man always says first time heard. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> New World Percussion Ensemble once again. Uh, for those of you who are interested in receiving a copy uh, of the album, you can get more information on it by calling 582-DRUM, that's 582-D-R-U-M. New World Percussion Ensemble is a local group, as a matter of fact, and they've played on many of the bills of local community festivals, and uh, they do a lot of charity work and free performances in the community, and uh, they're very well deserving of the support uh, from the community, very relaxing uh, album, and uh, I know my man, Omadi, uh, was on there with the percussion. One of my favorite percussionists, Mamadi Nasuma, <coughs> New World Percussion Ensemble. In studio with me this morning, we have individuals who are representing the African American Writers Guild, and they're in studio to share information relative uh, to the their group, uh, a group of writers who have joined together to continue our history through literary skills and fiction and in poetry. And uh, they also be sharing information for those who may be interested in joining the uh, African American Writers Guild, and uh, I'm going to have everybody introduce themselves this morning, and then uh, just find out what the uh, African American Writers Guild is all about. All right, my name is Ronald Steele. Good morning. Good morning. I'm the president of the African American Writers Guild. I'm Nikki G. Taifa, and I serve as membership director of the guild. I'm Diane. I'm Diane Semkin, and I uh, run the. Um, book discussion group and I also organize and coordinate the um, writers workshop okay um, what I like to do what we would like to do this morning is tell your listening audience a little bit about what the guild is what it does how it does it we'd like to also talk a little bit about the myth the twin literary myths that do African Americans and kind of defeat us at the starting line and they they are that African Americans don't like to read and don't write and um, um, that's basically uh, the gist and we also would like to talk about the role of african-american literature in liberating the minds of african-americans okay well, what, what are some of the things that that you do you, you come together with some of the projects you've done over the years okay we are a three and a half year old nonprofit um, literary organization comprised of more than 238 writers of all different genres who have come together to promote African-American literature and literacy in our community. And we do that in um, four ways right now. We're working on others. Those primary four components are the Writers' Workshop, of which Diane Simpkins is a chair, and she, of course, will tell you more about the Writers' Workshop. Uh, we also have the book discussion group. We have a quarterly newsletter that informs uh, our readers of uh, what's going on in the literary community, what's going on in the guild. We also inform them regarding uh, contests uh, and events that pertain to African American uh, 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 literacy or, or writing. And uh, we also have um, our Meet the Author series where we bring in authors of repute who um, discuss their craft or the industry or the book that they have written with our membership. And through those four components, we promote African American literature and literacy. We also put on a number of, of uh, book fairs, festivals, and conferences, uh, again, aimed at promoting 
the works of African-American authors and thereby promoting literacy. Yeah, there are a lot of people who have <clears throat> uh, writing skills who, who, who don't know it, who uh, may just uh, sit down and, and, and start jotting down words that might rhyme or uh, jotting down concepts of things and people who, who really don't view themselves as writers but they really are who uh, I guess maybe they got involved with, with a group of, of, of the nature of yours will probably even try to develop uh, that skill. I even from time to time will write things, whether it be a speech or uh, a poem or, or, or uh, in, in letters that you might write to people uh, there's definitely a, a writing skill there and a lot of people aren't able to, to conceptualize themselves as writers or don't put themselves into that, that particular category but uh, there are more I think there are more people who are in the writing uh, than, than, than we want to realize is that whole right. concept that we're talking about people, us right. thinking yeah. that we don't read sure. and that we don't, we do we don't read. write and we, we, we do, do it write. all the time sure. we do and see, read and we do write and um, in, the, um, in the workshop we have people um, that are actual beginners they're working on their very first work and we have other people who've been published many 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 times all of these people meet every other Wednesday and we go over any work that they have written we uh, go over poetry we uh, have gone over three novels that have came out of the workshop we have gone over plays we have gone over screenplays we have reviewed many different types of work and everyone who is in the workshop is supportive of the other person no matter what their writing skill is it's a very um, family kind of thing after you meet with us once or twice you feel like you belong to this family writers workshop via the African American Writers Guild and it's one of the most satisfying things that I've ever done in my entire life and the workshop is ongoing which means if you are working on a play if you're working on a short story all you have to be is a member of the African American Writers Guild. Call me, say, I want to uh, have my work reviewed, I want my work critiqued. Come to our next uh, meeting, which is, as I said, every other Wednesday, and we'll look at your work, we'll talk about your work, we'll let you talk about your work, we'll get a feel for your work, and we'll tell you what you can do to improve it, or we'll tell you that it's just fine the way that it is. Mm -hmm. Um, Diane touches on, I mean, I'm glad you brought up the subject, Norm, because it touches on the, uh, the issue of the myth that I uh, mentioned in the opening remarks. And that is, um, we, we have to first realize that we are the descendants of the people who founded writing. The, the oldest known form of writing are hieroglyphics, and they were invented by Africans during the ancient civilization. Um, some of the world best writers are writers of African descent. Um, uh, even in America, some of its most creative, prolific writers have been African American writers. Um, even in Washington, D.C., um, we have an emerging bookstore, a book chain, Pyramid book, book Chain, which is now comprised of about five stores which specialize in promoting or selling books uh, pertaining to Africans throughout the diaspora. We also have, in addition to that, um, Rabina, Sister Rabina's bookstore, Natural Reflection, which specializes in books about Africans and other cultures specifically uh, tailored to children. So uh, the myth that we don't read and we don't write is simply that. It is a myth because if that were in actuality the case, then... We wouldn't have any members. We wouldn't have any... <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have the, the African American exactly. Writers Guild, wouldn't have these uh, bookstores, etc. and so forth. But we have been convinced, which probably began in slavery, when they banded us from being able to read, and then they follow that ban up with the myth that we just don't like to read. And for years, we happen to think that no matter how naturally gifted we are as a writer, that in order to be a writer, you have to be an Ernest Hemingway, or you have to be a Robert Frost, or you're not a writer. And that's just not true. And, and the proof of the pudding is the African-American writer's guild. Because a lot of people are intimidated. You think that to write a book, you, you go in a library and see books with three, four hundred, five hundred pages, and, and it's intimidating. But I guess writing is just something that you concept you have to conceptualize mm -hmm. an idea of thought and then put it on paper and, and for a lot of us who do a lot of writing you, you sometimes 
you write something down in, in a rough form, and then you have to, you know, work at it That's to go right. back. Yeah. And, and uh, mm -hmm. there are people that will, who will help you uh, conceptualize what you what you're doing and That's put it right. into correct form That's and. That's what our workshop does. We're, we're very, very good at that. There's a man in our workshop who's working on his novel. He's written it. He has the first draft, and it's actually in rough form. All of us have uh, gone over his novel, and we have given him ideas and direction and how to make it better. Currently, he's working on his second draft, and I'm sure that within a few months, he will have something that's ready to go to an agent or a publisher. You, you use the term um, getting published, and uh, uh, what it specifically is involved with a person getting published? And what's that whole terminology, getting published, about? Well, I'd like to say that I think it depends on exactly what it is you want to publish. Uh, some people write letters to the editor, and they're published. Other people write novels, and they're published. Other people write poetry and they're published. A lot of people today, especially in this Washington, D.C. area, are using a vehicle called self-publishing. That is really the only way that they can get their work out to the people. And it's a relatively simple process. As a matter of fact, the Guild will be doing another workshop concerning self-publishing. Um, sometimes when you use an agent or when you use uh, what is called a mainstream publishing company, you run into problems because they do not want to back what you are writing. So hence, a lot of African American writers self-publish. And it is, once you get your startup monies together, it can be profitable or at least it will pay for the next printing of your book. Mm -hmm. 917 in the, in the nation's capital. What, what are you all favorite form of, of writing uh, uh, or are you have any of you ever published any well, books or I'm a journalist um, I am a freelance journalist and I've been publishing a couple of national magazines um, um, I write along the theme of the need for African Americans to know their history and their heritage and I'm also in the process of writing a novel called um, Niggas No More <laughs> a blueprint for African American empowerment. And Kichi Taifa is also the author who, who, of the book. Who won't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah, really she laid back to me. <laughs> she won't talk to me. She'll write, <laughs> express herself, and people can go, go read it, but she won't talk to me. She's in a laid no, back mode today. <laughs> yeah, this is a lazy Tuesday morning, but basically I am a self-published author as well as membership director of the Guild, and I'm the author of a children's book, and that happens to be my literary genre of choice, um, children's books, children's um, poetry, and my book is entitled Shining Legacy, and it's about story poems uh, about our um, famous black heroes and heroines of the past. And I, too, 100% agree, uh, agree that it is a myth out there that African people in America don't like to read and don't like to write. In the very short history of the Guild itself, we've had over 400 um, uh, writers or persons just interested in writing and reading come through the um, guild. We don't restrict membership in the guild to published um, authors. Mm -hmm. we, um, we encourage and inspire anyone to join the guild, any African American who is either a published or unpublished writer would be writers like uh, persons that Diane has been talking about in her workshops, people who simply love to read, people who That's enjoy right. attending literary events, of which we have one coming up this week that I'm sure we'll be talking about in a few minutes, sure. and also writers who just want to interact and to network with other writers, because a key part of all of this is networking mm -hmm. and inspiring mm -hmm. other people to um, uh, be about this whole process. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point that Kichi makes because all of us who are published authors know that deep down inside of us there's that little shy person who years ago had the notion that they might yeah. could write or that they could, you know they might become a writer one day and so uh, you wrote and you you filed it away and you wrote and you showed it to your friends and you filed it away and um, I was like that not long ago and by my association with the African American Writers Guild and being around all these different writers and hearing these same stories their same quest for uh, 
for being published and then seeing so many of them get published and I said hey what am I waiting for <laughs> and so in 1989 I decided that, that would be the year that I would emerge as a writer and since then I have more or less taken off as a writer and um, I encourage all you listeners out there who think you can write who once had who who thought you I mean who once had the notion that you could become a writer to not give up on it but to pursue it and one of the best ways to resuscitate your writing interest is to join the African American Writers Guild and let us help show you the way for, for people who are interested in, in going into writing as a hobby or maybe even as a career or as something they want to do as a, as a side as a, a, a what are some of the basic skills, some of the, the basic things that, that you need to uh, have in, in terms mm -hmm. of just, just con uh, I guess, real technical things in terms um, of writing? I'd, I'd like to answer that first, and, and, that's, and that's only because um, I keep the, um, the writer's workshop going. I always say the basic skill that you need to have is to know how to write a sentence with a verb and a subject matter in it. That's what I always say you need. Now... <laughs> Uh, personally, I, I say there has to be a burning passion to express yourself. If you have the passion to express yourself, you will find a way. Yes, it would be very helpful if you knew grammar, <laughs> but not knowing grammar should not prevent you from trying to express yourself. Right. If you look at some of the, the early novels by Africans that were written during slavery, um, you know, it would probably bring shame to the eyes of a grammarian. But those books were published. European grammarian. European grammarian. Thank you for that correction. <laughs> but, but those books were published. In spite of that, those Africans did not let uh, the lack of uh, knowledge of European grammar prohibit them from writing. And they wrote. They expressed themselves. So I think, essentially, there has to be a burning passion and desire to express yourself creatively on paper. And that, in my opinion, uh, begets a writer. Well, that's something, uh, this is a, one of my favorite poems by Sterling Brown, All Strong Men. Strong Men, men keep it coming up. It has, it has that, the, the, the type of grammar that, that you're talking about, but it, it's just so, it's a very powerful poem. And, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll never forget uh, a young man had to read it on a program one time, and, and the young people kind of didn't respond to him and thought that he was, you know, up there speaking bad English and, and somebody had to get up and explain to him you know that hey this is the uh, uh, this, this whole poem is, is about what the, the political environment at that time mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. uh, writers at that time that's the way that, that people talk and, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and in, addi in addition to uh, the burning passion and um, you know knowing the rudiments of writing I think that um, an emerging writer should also read a lot they should read as much as they possibly can read and, and identify some of their favorite writers they should attend literary events they should join literary organizations because all of us need encouragement no man is an island you're out there writing by yourself filled with all this doubt you have the tendency sometimes to doubt yourself right out of action but if you're constantly in association with others who are pursuing the same interest then you have an automatic tendency or built-in support mechanism that constantly reinforces yourself so it's good for the emerging writer to get out there be exposed and associate with other writers and literary events right and we encourage people to attend our meet the author series that's one of the benefits of um, African American Writers Guild um, membership which we have um, occasionally. We have one coming up this Thursday. In, in, in effect, we have a monthly, by the way. Okay, thank you very much, <laughs> monthly. And it will be presenting Dr. Nzinga Warfield Coppic, who um, also is a self-published local um, writer. She's the co-author of Teenage Pregnancy Prevention, a Rites of Passage Resource Man Manual, and also Transformation, a Rites of Passage Manual for African American Girls. And she is very well versed and an expert on the whole issue of Rites of, of Passage for our people. So we encourage people to come out this Thursday at um, 6.30 at 
at the UDC Carnegie Library um, downtown and share in, um, uh, in, in actually seeing and experiencing um, someone who is local in our community who has written and published a number of works. That's just one of the benefits of, of membership. Other benefits is the um, eligibility to attend the writers' workshops that Diane Simpkins talked about and also the book study groups. A 10% discount on all books purchased at Pyramid Bookstores. And as Ronald already said, there are over, uh, well, at least five um, bookstores in, in this general area right now at this time or coming up soon. And also um, benefit of Guild membership is a 30% discount on tickets to um, uh, Guild-sponsored events. We have a, a newsletter that comes out and a benefit of membership is an annual subscription to the newsletter um, Word Up. Um, the, um, frequent seminars on how to get um, published, regular forms, and, and the whole um, bit. And all of this is just for a very nominal fee of $15 um, per year. And, yeah, I mean, all That's of that a and more. <laughs> I, I belong to some, some groups that I pay much more money and don't get... <laughs> and, Norm, not only that, in the um, African tradition of honoring our youth and our elders, the um, annual dues for seniors and for youth, for students, is only $10 a year. So we encourage those listeners in the WOL, WOL family to don't put it off, but to join the Guild today. Excellent. And there's one other, um, there's one other uh, um, um, thing that you can get from the Guild, and that is the book discussion group, which is very important. As Ron said, you should read, read, read if you want to write, or even if you are writing. The book discussion group, I feel, is very, very important because it gives you a chance to select authors that you may want to read and that you'd like to discuss with other people. This book discussion group meets um, once every month, September through May. This September, the book we're reading is called I'm A Go. It's by Octavia Butler. She is the only mm -hmm. African-American mm -hmm. science fiction mm -hmm. fantasy writer that I know of. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to add one more comment regarding what does it take to become a writer. We talked about a lot of things, but there's one essential thing that I overlooked, and I almost took it for granted. Writers must write until they drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All the time. Just That's write, right. write, write. Don't let anyone stop you. Always make time uh, in your daily schedule, if not weekly schedule, to write whatever. Whatever comes to your mind, just write, write, write. That's true. 927 in the nation's capital. One of the things I want to do in is open up the phone lines, 432-1450 is the telephone number to call, I ask you to hang on, we can go to straight to our phone lines as soon as we come back, 432-1450 is the telephone number, I want to ask you all, we save this one when we come back to uh, ask you who were some of your favorite authors or some of your, your favorite literary works and also uh, to think about some, some books that, they can, that you all would like to recommend that, that we have our young people and our children uh, begin to read also. Uh, books that parents can get their children. Now, 28, the nation's capital. Okay, first of all, it's going to be Thursday, this Thursday, July 19th at 6.30 p.m. at the Carnegie Library. The number to call for more information or for more information about the Guild itself is 722-2760. 722-2760, and I might as well give the address at this time while everyone has their pencils out. <laughs> <laughs> African American Writers Guild, Columbia Heights Station, P.O. Box 43874, Washington, D.C. 20010. P.O. Box 43874, Washington, D.C. 20010. Okay, I had to get everybody some help there uh, uh, very quickly. And once again, the membership requirements for, for your organization, once again. Right. Well, the membership fee, the annual fee, is only $15 um, a year. And it entitles you to a wide range of benefits, including discounts on books at all pyramid bookstores and uh, up to 30% discount on guild-sponsored events and eligibility to attend the writer's workshop sessions and the book study groups, as well as the annual ex subscription to our um, quarterly newsletter, Word Up. Okay, 941, 80 degrees in the nation's capital. We'll go to our phone lines. Good morning, you're on WL. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'd like to... Uh uh, pertain to the book uh, uh, reading uh, uh, materials for children. Mm -hmm. That was a program uh, uh, about a week or so ago on TV 
pertaining to uh, uh, children's uh, teaching other children how to read. This particular story was about a little white kid teaching a, a, a black kid how to read. Uh, and I would like to refer to another book that I saw at the pyramid uh, called Jody. And it was the same identical story aligned with a, a, a white boy and a black boy uh, uh, learn how to read. And uh, the white kid was teaching the black kid how to read called Jody. And I think that's a very good piece of material that uh, children could be using to read in terms of elevating their ability to be able to uh, recognize the, the difference and uh, instructional point of view and read it. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me just uh, say something about what the caller just said dealing with children's books, and I think that was one of the questions that you raised before we left for the break. I'm glad that he is going to the bookstores and looking at the books and watching um, programming dealing with um, this subject. But right here in this city, we have a very rich tradition of uh, writers, African-American writers, who write children's literature, uh, some of who are current or past members of the Guild, such as Eloise Greenfield, who is a nationally, internationally mm -hmm. known children's book uh, writer uh, who's written... I don't want to know if I should say hundreds, but dozens, okay, <laughs> about 20 uh, books for our youth, among them being Honey, I Love, and many, many, many others. Also, Sharon Bell Mathis, who has also been through the Guild, has a number of books out there for our youth. Um, I used to be a teacher, and I know we use some of both of their writings, Eloise Greenfield and Sharon Bell Mathis's, in our um, teaching um, instructions, as well as Darla Davenport Powell, who's an upcoming young writer in Washington, D.C., who has a, a wonderful little book out for very small youth called Here Comes um, Naya. And I got to stick myself in there, Nikichi <laughs> Taifa, uh, author of Shining Legacy um, for our youth. So in terms of the whole realm of children's literature right here in this city and within the Guild, we do have a rich tradition. Excellent. Good morning, on WL. Okay. Good morning. Hello. Yes, you're on the air. Okay, hold on. Hold on, okay, I'll ah. put you on hold. <laughs> Good morning, you're on WL. Good morning, Mr. John Nixon, how you doing? Okay, how are you? I'm into your guest. Hi. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. I'm calling to, uh, the lady said that uh, Octavia Butler was, is, what, the only science fiction writer, black science fiction writer? Um, an, the only um, African-American woman science fiction writer that I know of. Uh, I, I don't know of any others, and I only know of two um, African-American men who write science fiction fantasy. Uh, is that that be Delaney and, and Sanders? Yes. Okay, uh, because they, um, something just came out recently, and um, they were in the Pyramid Bookstore, and somebody zapped them up real quick. That's right. You, they, they don't stay on the shelf. No, they, they don't. I, I couldn't hear much, but um, have you um, given information out on your workshop this weekend? Uh, you talk, are you speaking of the uh, writer's workshop? Yes. The writer's workshop, uh, we meet again on the 25th of this month, a Wednesday, and we meet every other Wednesday. And we've been doing this for um, almost three years. Okay, um, where's the location at? Well, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I don't want to tell you over the over the radio, but I will tell you what number to call, okay. and you can talk to me. Um, it's seven two six yes twelve twenty four. Please call me anytime. Okay, ma'am. And what is your name, sir? My name is Tyrone Holt. Okay, I'll be expecting a call. I am. Um, I write science fiction. Also. Oh, that's wonderful. And um, I, I, when you say I'll tell you about that, I was trying, I had to run all, all the other other side. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. I'll expect a call from you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank let you. Let me let me just say uh, two two points, please, uh, regarding the writers' workshop. One reason why Diane does not want to give the address over the air is because it is a uh, private address. Um, the workshops are held in the homes of the members uh, rather than a public uh, public place. Uh, the other thing, the way the writers' workshop work is, say the writers' workshop is designed for those who are aspiring to write and for those who are writing and are aspiring to get published. And the way it works is you bring your works in progress, and that's what we call an aspiring work. A works in progress to the writer's workshop, which is comprised of about eight to ten some well lately we've lately we've had, had even uh, more yes okay eight or more writers of all different genres and you read your work before these writers and they critique it with the interest not of bringing it down but of developing it that's right and you can take 
what you want, what you feel is relevant, incorporate it into your work and bring it back at the next session and reread it or you can reject it. The choice is yours. We're here to help, not hurt. That's right. And we also do uh, works in progress readings. So any work that you develop in your workshop, uh, we have special times during the year. One of the special times is uh, Washington um, Writers Week where we read our work publicly to an audience. And usually we have a question and answer session after that for the writers of, uh, for the readers of their work. Mm -hmm. And also in October, the African American Writers Guild will be presenting to the public through our Meet the Author series, uh, these writers who are in the writers workshop. Where they'll be presenting their work to uh, the guild and the public through that Meet the Author series event. 948, good morning, you're on WL. Good morning, Norm, good morning to you guests. Good morning. I try to write. I have about 200 poems in copyright. <laughs> <laughs> I also have yeah, that must be fantastic. I've been writing novels since 1984, and I think I've finished, but I'm not sure. Because, you know, I keep adding a chapter every time I hear something. <laughs> and my husband is a science, uh, science uh, specific, well, not what, science fiction, I'm sorry, writer. He graduated from Oregon State, and he uh, did something in journalism. And he has been writing several science fiction novels, and I've read all of them, and I tell you, they're better than most of the ones I've seen on television. And I want to join your guild. Well, I hope you do join the guild. Yes, please call 722-2760 and um, leave your address and we'll send you a membership packet. Or you can write us directly, African American Writers Guild, P.O. Box 43874, Columbia Heights Station, Washington, D.C., 20010. Or come out this Thursday to the Meet the Author series presenting Dr. Nzinga Warfield Copic, and you can pick up a membership application right there. Oh, I would love to come As Thursday. well as meet some of the other members of the guild. I would love to come Thursday, but I promised um, Travis Britt and, and uh, Hope Brown that I would be at a meeting at the church. You know, they're running for the council and for the delegate at the state norm, you know, about Right, that. they were just uh, yesterday. Right on to you, talk, sister. by the way. I know my friends are listening. <laughs> Okay. But anyway, I will do this, and I would love to join because I do write a lot, and I need to get it out, you know, to be read. I, it doesn't matter, but I just want to write. Great. Right. We'd okay. love to have you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now, 49 the Nation Capital. Uh, along with writing, and, and you said something about uh, having members present works so that they can be critiqued from a constructive point of view. Do we do enough in terms of critical reading, being able to read things and, and put them into proper context, and just basic things like newspapers and, and magazines? And uh, as writers, do, do we do enough analytical thinking about things that we write? I think so. Um, um, I, I read a lot of current events. I am a journalist, and I read a number of different newspapers, both in the white press as well as in the black press. Um, in fact, that is one of my hobbies, if you will, is reading and um, just taking in all of that knowledge and information. Uh, naturally, all this information becomes critical when I write or when I critique the work of other writers. So I think by nature of our discipline, which is to write, we are natural readers and we read a lot, you know, just naturally. But also, um, I think it's WOL study group and mm -hmm. um, groups like that to get together, as well as group that the Guild sponsors to read books and critique them are on the move, but on the in uh, increase right. on the rise. And I think that's really good and really indicative of where we are at this time in history right now. There are certain books that are just absolutely must. And I know before the break you talked about, you know, books that um, we liked and some of the books that are, are must, I would say, are like Carter G. Woodson's Miseducation of the Negro, and that's a book that should be studied and analyzed. Books from our greats, such as Chancellor Williams and um, Chikanta Giappa and the like. And um, also the cl classics dealing with um, Sterling Brown. You mentioned Sterling Brown. He's one of my absolute favorites <laughs> also as well. And I was very fortunate uh, before he passed to uh, the other realm. Uh, he did critique my book and mm -hmm. wrote um, a little message on the back of it. But the, the book that I like 
uh, the best is actually a book that deals with historical fiction, uh, though I read all of the historical nonfiction and the like, but historical fiction, and this is a writer from the continent of Africa, I.E. Kwe'i Omar, and he wrote a tremendous book called 2000 Seasons, which basically documents the thousand years of onslaught of the um, Arabs against our people and the thousand years of, uh, not thousand years, seasons of onslaught of the European against our, our, our people in a fic fictionalized way that made it very um, interesting and exciting and very informative. So that's, even though I write poetry, uh, what I like to read is historical fiction. Okay, why don't we go around? <laughs> okay, um, I'm also a lover of historic nonfiction, and some of my favorite books are The African Origin of Civilization by Sheikh Anta Diop, Introduction to African Civil Civilization by John G. Jackson, The Destruction of the Black Civilization, Chancellor William, Egypt Revisited, edited by Ivan Van Sertima, um, They Came Before Columbus by Ivan Van Sertima, um, the Autobiography of Malcolm X by L Alex Haley. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, yeah, <laughs> and um, there are a number of other books by um, uh, uh, J.A. Rogers, who, um, who did an awful, uh, I mean, a great deal of research and documentation on the history and the greatness of uh, Africans. Mm -hmm. Well, my... Uh very favorite author is my husband, uh, C.O. Simpkins, who's written a yes. whole train of biography, <laughs> which you can find in the Pyramid. And uh, it's, uh, yes, it's in its fifth uh, printing, so it, it, it's, it's, a, it's an excellent book. And my other favorite authors are Toni Morrison, and the book that I like the best that she wrote is called Song of Solomon. If you read the book, make sure that you remember the seven days that's a very important part of the book that is usually not uh, talked about Samuel R. Delaney is also one of my favorite writers and Never On is his book that I like and David Bradley uh, who authored uh, the Cheneysville incident is my other favorite writer um, and then in the uh, historical genre Van Sertima and Dr. Ben I forgot to mention one that I just simply feel I must because it was the first guild that I was a part of about maybe 15 years ago, the John Oliver Killings Literary Guild that was at Howard University. And his books, I love all of his books, especially Great Getting Up Morning, which is about the slave rebellion of um, Denmark V.C. So I just wanted to um, um, put out John Oliver Killings. <laughs> Wonderful writer. Yes. Um, speaking of uh, our desire to read and whether or not we read critically, uh, first thing we must keep in mind is the reference that we use and in terms of what is critical thinking, what is critical review. We read and review and criticize from an African-centric perspective, and that's what distinguishes the African-American Writers Guild uh, from any other writers organization in the Washington metropolitan area. We're probably the largest African-American Writers Guild in the Washington metropolitan area. But also uh, on the subject of reading, Diane Simpkins, as quiet as is kept, happens to be a member of a book discussion group that for six years have met once a month hmm. to discuss a book. So if there's anyone who can critique uh, literature on the scene today, it is, it is indeed our very own Diane Simpkins, who is the Excellent. chairperson of the Writers' <laughs> Workshop. 955, let's take one more phone call. Good morning, you're on WL. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'd like to uh, weigh in on uh, someone called on a, a particular uh, movie and uh, book. Uh, it was called uh, uh, Special Relationship. And that book is based upon a uh, movie that was Jody, and there's at the pyramid. I also saw that, and I uh, just want to weigh in and give information to that fact that someone called earlier. Okay, oh, thank you. Called, That's the name uh, of the book. Special relationship, and the uh, that was a black uh, boy teaching a, uh, a white boy teaching a black boy, and this particular uh, book, uh, Jody, is a little white boy teaching the black boy. So it's the same, a similar identical thing. However, uh, the uh, author is a local author right here in the area. Uh, who is the author? Uh, I think uh, I can get this book okay. right in front of me. 
but I saw it at the pavement yesterday. Okay. I hope that uh, most of the um, the um, people out there in Double OL family who are interested in purchasing books for their children will also be mindful of cultural values. And we get enough of white people, the image of white people teaching us how to do things when we are actually the founders of most knowledge. And there are books available uh, that, that depict African Americans, teaching African Americans how to do almost everything. 957 in the nation's capital. We're out of time for this morning's broadcast. Once again, thank you all for joining us. Thank you. And a very, very excellent morning on behalf of Mr. Dan Foster, Miss Andrea Springer, Brother Bay, and myself. Remember, WL means we offer love, and if it is to be, it is up to us. More better man be coming away at 10 o'clock with Washington, D.C.'s best oldies with goodies, and we'll talk about the Arbitron ratings on tomorrow. Didn't get a chance to do that. You all take care, and we'll be back with you with the morning show tomorrow. Thank you.